Good morning everyone, it's Monday the 18th of May. I'm looking for a D plus signal. D plus in Mercedes Volkswagen craft retype terms is the signal when the engine's running. On the Sprinter, that is presented in the passenger seat via an interface called EK1, which I'll put a link to below. And they give you a nice handy connection point for um, engine running, ignition on, and also just a battery supply output as well for connecting accessories. But in the Crafter, or at least in my Crafter, I don't have that. And the only source of the D plus signal is a blue and white wire that comes from the alternator. It does present itself via a eight way connector under the bonnet. And it also presents itself to this device, which is called the onboard supply control unit, which is really a little bit more than a glorified fuse box. It's got relays, fuses. There's also a secondary fuse carrier there at the bottom, which clips on the bottom there. There are all your fuses, or the vast majority of your fuses for your vehicle. But this unit here is a very clever piece of electronics, and it has... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten connectors. Twelve, eleven even connectors on the back of it. So to get that out is a case of removing a whole load of trim from the side of the vehicle, including the OBC port which simply just, where's it gone? There it is, that's the OBC port, just simply clips into uh, the housing, uh, the grey plastic housing that goes here. And uh, this is a bit of overkill perhaps, but I wanted to get to the blue and white wire as it presented into the back of the vehicle. The wiring diagram um, says that it is on pin 12 of connector H3. And yes, you've guessed it, connector H3 isn't on the front, in any of these we can get to it it's on the back in fact it's that one right at the very top there the wiring diagram is going to call these all sorts of things uh, depending on what you're looking at but it's h3 on here and there's a real hornet's nest of wires and cables and things now the connector i'm interested in is can i get to it that one there that's a connector, that's H3, minus the shroud. The blue and white wire is just there by my thumbnail, made it look a bit green and yellow there, and that goes to pin 12. This connector normally sits in this shroud, and it pushes in through the back, and you'll notice if I can do it one-handed, just yes, can, that part there slides off the back. There's a couple of little indents in the plastic to uh, retain it, but once that's slid off, the whole connector comes out the back. The reason I'm doing it like this is I want to actually disconnect the pin from the actual, where's it gone? I want to disconnect the pin, which is easy enough to do, it's easy enough to do once the, the uh, connector's taken apart, disconnect the pin, splice a wire into the connection, put a bit of heat shrink on, if I didn't disconnect the pin I'd have to do something like wrap it in tape and I don't like wrapping stuff up in tape. Um, and that will give me once I've spliced the wire into it, a D plus connection in the van that I can then run to um, <coughs> a relay. You, you, I won't be drawing any current off of this cable, I'm just going to use it to run, run a relay. So when the engine runs, it turns the relay on, and that relay can then provide um, some output to the device I want to power up. One of the devices I need to power up is that screen there. I only want power on that screen, that's my reversing camera screen or one of them. I only want power on that one when the engine's running. I've also got um, some wires dangling out here, somewhere, there. That goes to the switch on my, on my uh, step. I only want to know via a warning buzzer that the step is out if I go to pull away with the engine running. I don't want to know about it when the ignition's on because I could well have the ignition turned on when we're parked up. So that's what the D plus signal is going to be for. Um, now I could have gone into the engine bay 
and taking it off of the wire directly coming the connector directly off the back of the alternator there is one video on youtube in german where the owner has done exactly that but i don't like um chopping and making connections to cabling under the bonnets there that's a hostile dirty environment if i can do it in a in a cleaner environment under the dash then all well and good the other thing i need to find in this fan is an ignition on feed now there's loads of those there's quite a few of them presented under the passenger seat but in this case i'm actually quite lucky there's a cable there cable tied in it's the only one i ever left when i ripped out all the original ambits electrics that is the ignition on feed that goes to the blower um, control switch for the rear air conditioning unit and I will spur off of that to another relay to provide power switching for anything I want to power up when the ignition's on um, or albeit without the engine running I haven't got anything in mind that I need to do right away but the D plus signal is definitely something I wanted to find. Uh, it's damned annoying that they haven't presented it as an optional extra in the, dry, in the passenger seat in the same way as they do in the Sprinter. But at least I found it. I can now make a connection to it. One thing I should have probably said at the outset is this is definitely a job to do with the battery disconnected. Uh, there's a lot of electrics behind this panel. Um, I've just finished off the cable to H3 that goes on the back of this supply unit um, and I was about to put it back in and I noticed the connector that goes to this one here X3 had a bit of black tape around one of the wires I don't like black tape a bit suspicious so I took it off and sure enough the wire had been got at um, and the wire had been badly stripped and damaged and these aren't thick wires anyway so I wandered off upstairs to check what this particular connector X3 pin 14 did and it's the feed to the reversing lights I decided to repair that cable and while I was at it I've taken a wire off of that one as well because I've I need a, an input to the uh, reversing camera and I also need an input that I can operate via a relay for the scene lights that I fitted on the side of the van that I showed in a, another video because they're going to be off the back of the uh, they're going to work off the reversing lights as well as um, internal switches so there you go X3, pin 14, reverse light output. I'm now going to put it all back together. So the connectors that go to the front, I've tucked up out of the way. There's some interesting stuff up here. There's a red cable in there with a dirty great wrap of um, insulation around it and a big blobby thing, don't know what that is. There's also a whole load of heat shrinky type connections there. Um, again, not sure what they are. This is the lead that I fitted the cable to for the D plus signal. Sold and heat shrink joint there. And then just a bit of blue. I always use blue tape personally and blue heat shrink if I can, because then I know that it's me that's been there, not somebody else. A uh, bit of tape around there just to support this uh, cloth based wrapping. And again, a bit up there just to tie the new wire back. So those connectors go on the rear of the unit this one with a bit of a pig to get off this fitting here just slides up to release the catches but this one on the right here was being a bit of a pig but you can see that one's got a slide that one's got a fold down clamp which you release this one you push in at one side that one at the back there what does that one do That one's going to push as well. So they've got their different methods of um, retaining. And obviously being able to see them helps. But you can't see them, you've got to do it by fill. And the ones on the front are similar as well. They've got different, various different mechanisms for holding them. So that's it popped back in before I connect the front connectors on. It's held in by clips. One there and a peg and uh, another clip just above it identical to that they need to bend back slightly then it pulls forward and drop them the top pins drop down and then this fuse box here will it go in one-handed simply slides back it <coughs> will it go in one hand he says come on yes no yes yeah like bingo 
and that just clip those just those clips there hold that in so that's the lower fuse box in place there we go that's everything plugged back in the only thing that should be left <laughs> is that obd port everything else is plugged in the right holes they cannot be put in the wrong holes each connector is completely unique um the fixing mechanism as i described are slightly different depending on the type of connector but they are unique you can't get it wrong you just need to be careful you don't damage any pins or etc etc especially for the three or four at the top there which are a bit awkward to get at and there's the cable i have run from the two connectors in the fuse box labeled up blue labels d plus and reverse and also insulated at the ends as well i may not use these cables for some time so I don't want to shorten out anything. And they just temporarily run up the A-pillar. Um, next job, I've got a couple of um, speaker cables I need to wire in because there's no rear speaker wiring in this fan. And uh, that's why the glove box and everything else is still out. So, that's how you wire up D+. Thanks for watching.